everyone. Well, it's spring, but you would never know it here in Michigan. It's been like the never-ending winter. The good thing is, is that I've been feeling good. I'm all done with my chemo. Thanks so much for all your well wishes. I'm back working on haunt projects full time, getting things crossed off the list for Halloween 2018 here at Haunt on the Hill. So I'm indoors today and my mind has been going 100 miles an hour since we got back from Trans World in St. Louis a couple weeks ago. We had such a great time. I put together a video just showing a glimpse of what we saw on the Trans World floor and all the great Haunter friends that we met up with. Such fond memories. It's definitely my happy place. So if you haven't seen the video, I'll have a link in the description below. Today, I thought I would show you what we brought home from Trans World and also how I made my vintage owl and my vintage cat head. I put together a how-to from start to finish, so I'll be showing you that in a bit. And I also finished my three pumpkins that I was working on in my last video. So there's lots to see, so I hope you enjoy this video, hope to inspire, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, here is my Trans World show and tell. I picked up this thermal shirt and we picked up all of our fog and scents from Froggy's Fog. We got all new scents for the three sections in our haunt that has fog. Um, campfire, rainforest, and popcorn will be new this year. And for the spray, I picked up my favorite scent of all, which is the Gothic. I like to spray some of my props when I'm finished with them. And I also like the Haunted House. Uh, I picked up some Haunt Sauce Flex. I needed some more fake blood and thought I would give this a try. And I also got uh, one of my Trans World favorites. This is our third time attending Trans World and I buy them every time I go. It's the Pumpkin Vine Hands. They were great for my trick-or-treaters because they're a little small. They're totally posable um, and the price is right. So uh, I got eight sets of them and also a set of the feet, which are two left feet, but um, they're still fun to get creative with. So I'm all set with my hands and there's the company I got them from. And my pumpkins, love at first sight. I came around the corner at Trans World and I had to ask if they were real. I really thought they were real rotten pumpkins. So they're sold from Ghost Ride in sets of six. So I was able to take these home and I'm going to make one or two of them into trick-or-treaters. The rest will just be sitting around. In the meantime, they're throughout the house. So yes, love the rotten pumpkins. And from Creepy Collections, we couldn't go home without Portrait Lady. We just love her style and we think she'll fit in really nice in our boutique area with a scene all to her own, especially lit up at night. So she's just a part of the family now. So there you have it, Trans World 2018. We won't be returning. For two years, we go every other year just to keep things fresh. So time for us to start saving for Trans World 2020. So here are the paper mache pumpkins that I was working on in my last video. They're all finished and sealed up and ready for October. At the very beginnings of two of my three trick-or-treaters for this season. Um, these are going to be paper mache they're the heads um, of, I'm going to make a vintage cat head and an owl head possibly. I was inspired by this picture here, um, thinking it's going to work out pretty well. When bad weather hits, I'll be able to just lift the heads off and put them inside instead of bringing in the whole trick-or-treater. So um, yes, I'm ready to get these paper mache and 
get them in shape, and I'll be back when I make more progress. Hey, thought I'd give you a quick peek. I mean, oh, oh, look at the shinings on. Oh, it's the part, the best part. Anyway, I added these cardboard ears and I'm about to paper mache again. I've already got uh, two layers of paper mache and this will be my third to tie in the ears and then I'll do one more layer after that and I'll be going from there. All right, here is where I'm at with uh, these projects. I've got my cat head trick-or-treater here. He's going to get one more coat of paper mache and he'll be ready for paper clay. And this guy, I ended up taking a little different direction. He was going to be a trick-or-treater as well, but I decided to just make him an owl prop that I will have um, the inside hollowed out so he'll be able to sit on any fence post in the haunt. I've got his little tail here ready for paper mache. Oh, it's going to be a painful last layer, but I think well worth it. I can't wait to get paper clay on him and uh, get some detail. All right, here is where I'm at with my cat head and owl. I'm about to take them outside and drill a hole in the bottom. I'm gonna keep the stuffing in. I just made a batch of paper clay and I'm gonna get them all sculpted and let that paper clay dry before I take the stuffing out. Um, so yes, it's a beautiful day and I'm gonna spend the afternoon working with paper clay. Started the paper clay on my owl starting at the top and working my way down, putting in my details as I go. Okay, here's another update. Uh, I'm gonna save the very bottom for a day or two from now and the claws. I don't wanna get that cardboard of the claws all wet and soggy tonight. Um, but anyway, I'm going to add some pine cones to his chest something a little different and here's this back side all right pine cones are in I'm gonna call it a night all right it's the next day and I kept a fan on him overnight and he was dry enough to get them all emptied and finish the bottom here those little claws so just gonna put a fan on this bottom and then he'll be able to stand upright and uh, get some drying in these next few days. Oh yes, that's snow in the background. We just got dumped on over Easter weekend and we are expecting more snow tonight. So I got these guys sealed inside and out today with driveway sealer. All right, it's the next day and I have since put a couple more coats on so the owl and this cat head have a good three coats of the driveway sealer on. I just drew out my face with some chalk and I'm ready to start painting. Time for a break. I thought I would just show you my progress. Of course, I'm nowhere near as done, but this is how I'm going about it. All right, I am finished with my painting and I'm just adding in some detail using this Tandy Leather Company Gel Antique. Uh, it's an Allen Hops favorite that I learned of a few years back. I bought that bottle a couple years ago at Transworld and I still have over half of it left. It's a great uh, finishing kind of thing. I use it on a lot of my projects. At the very end, just to add in um, some detail or age something up a bit. But anyway, I'm going to finish this cat up and I'll be back when I'm done. Right, so my vintage cat head is all finished and sealed. The next time you see him in my next video, he'll be a trick-or-treater. I found this vintage cat costume on eBay and I'll be putting him together soon. So he'll have a whole new look next time. Just getting started on this guy, gonna spend the evening um, just base coating different sections of him, painting up his little tail. I'll be uh, showing my progress as I go. All right, I'm going to call it a night. I've got basically all of my colors on. Um, 
I'm going to dry brush all the brown. I've got to start on that. That needs to dry good. So much fun! Okay, back to the antiquing gel from the Tandy Leather Company. Just want to show you how it just instantly takes that red. I don't know if you can see it even on the camera, but it just gives it a vintage war look like it's got some wear to it. All right, making some more progress. I did some dry brushing on the wings and I added that Tandy Leather Company Antique Gel. Um, I did add it to the, the little side wing here, whatever you want to call it, off of the eye and it made it look pretty muddy. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll be going back over that. It, it was the color of the wing um, and I'm not liking that so much. But anyway, it's fixable. All right, I'm starting on the eyes. This is my first step, and the worst part is waiting for paint to dry in between coats. All right, I just did a ring of tree frog green. I use this green all the time. I've talked about it in previous videos. It's like my favorite green. Anyway, I'm making sure that my outside line is clean. The inside will be painted black. And I'm doing several coats of this uh, tree frog green before I start with the black. Okay, here's the next step. I added the black and I just didn't go all the way down to the green at the bottom. All right, now I took my liner brush and outlined the outside circle and the inside of the green. All right, so next I added the color pansy to the bottom of the eye. All right, I came back with my liner brush and lined the bottom of the pansy color with the black. Don't forget to add the little highlights. Oh yes, I went around the outside of the eye with antiquing gel. And to finish off my eyes, I always add a little bling. I use the extra fine glitter whether I add it to you know one of the the bottom strips of color you can do that uh, this time I chose to add it to my white highlights so as soon as I get these blown away I'll be back all right he just needs a coat of the Minwax satin sealer this guy's done I might have to make him a buddy this guy's all finished up and out here practicing on his post for his big moment in October. He'll need just a little bit shorter post, but I can picture corn stalks and a blood red moon and scarecrows. Not this snow. Let's hope. watching